Hello, this video is going to show the integration with IBM Engineering Systems Design Rhapsody. Now, starting point is of course Rhapsody. And inside here I have a simple radio model. We can see I have a number of classes and the radio class has this state chart here. So the first thing I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to generate the code and then take a look and see, well, is it compliant to a particular coding standard? So let's start here with the radio class and let's go and invoke an LD ray and do a code review. So in this particular case, I'm going to do a code review against the Misra C++ standard and I've got a, a number of violations. Construct leads to infeasible code. Well, that's interesting. Let's take a look at line 114. And there we can see, well, that is interesting because we've set done equal to true. And then we're testing to see if done equals true. So why are we doing that? That's quite useful. Let's close this down. And let's take a look and see why that's interesting. We could take a look at the particular rule. And here we're going to get some information about that. Right, so now what I'd like to do is maybe let's take a, a look at this code and let's maybe take a look at um, a call graph. So let's generate a call graph and this is going to show us all the functions and I can put this into various different modes. For instance, I could view a mode that shows us the uh, maintainability, some of the metrics like the cyclomatic complexity and I can sort and I can find rapidly the most complex function. Well, let's take a, a closer look at this one and let's view it as a flow diagram. And the flow diagram is showing effectively uh, all the basically blocks inside the code. We can see how they're interconnected. If I was to click on a particular block of statements here, we can see the corresponding ones over there. Right, so what I'd now like to be able to do is to maybe test this code. So let's go and invoke this time TB run, and I'm going to create a sequence of test cases for testing this particular class. Well, the tool has automatically created for me a sequence, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask TB run to automatically generate test cases. So it's going to look at the source code, look at all the various uh, places where it's testing against a particular value, and it's going to use those values, plus one, minus one, various other options. And in this particular case, we can see it's generated 187 test cases. These have all passed. Well, that means with the particular inputs we specified here, we've got the expected output. We've even been able to specify particular Rhapsody events. And now that's executed, we should be able to take a look and see the coverage. And so there we've got 66 statement coverage, 56% branch decision coverage. If we wanted, we could take a, a closer look. And let's take a look at uh, a code coverage report. And we're going to be able to see exactly the coverage we've obtained. So quite a few of these functions, we've got 100% coverage. But some of these functions, we haven't got 100%. In fact, for tuning handling event, we've got very low coverage. So it looks like we've never actually exercised this particular line of code here. And so we can see we've got quite a bit of code that's not being exercised. All right, so let's, uh, let's close that down and let's go back into Rhapsody. Now, we've looked at just an individual file. Well, now let's now look at a, a complete project here and let's go and build this. So I'm going to regenerate the code and now I'm going to go and build that code. Okay, we can see it's building it with the Visual Studio compiler. Now I'm going to go and execute this, and we should be able to see the code is executing. So I can control this by typing things like O for on. I can maybe change the wavelengths a few times. I can maybe let's tune down. So let's do quite a few of those. And we can see we've tuned to frequency 254. Well, let's memorize that into memory four. Let's recall memory two. And now let's recall memory four and check we get 254. No, nope, no, nope, it's just four I need to type. And I've made a mistake there, but let's uh, just wait for that to time out. And let's recall memory four, and we can see we have 254. All right, let's switch this off. Let's do Q for quit. And I should now be able to, uh, well, what I want to be able to do is to find out, well, as that executed, what coverage did I obtain? So let's go and invoke TB Vision. 
And inside TB Vision, what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to analyze the source code. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so the code is, is analyzed. So now what I want to be able to do is to instrument the source code and execute it. So this is now going to put probes into the code and it's then going to build the instrument of code. It's then going to execute this and we should find it executes exactly the same as it did before. So it's just building it at the moment with the Visual Studio compiler. It's now executing and once again I can switch it on. I can change the wave bands a few times. I can uh, let's tune up this time a number of times. Let's memorize that into memory three. Okay, let's recall memory two, let's recall memory uh, three, and we can see we've recalled the frequency. So this is working good. Let's now switch that off and we'll do Q for quit. And now we're going to be able to find out, well, how much of this code did we actually exercise as we uh, stimulated it by typing in those commands. So it's just analyzing the history results here. And then we should be able to take a look at a, a number of reports. So, OK, that's now finished. So let's go and take a look at maybe a, a code coverage report. And the code coverage report, we can see very clearly the coverage we've obtained. So if we scroll down, we should be able to see for uh, the radio, for instance, we've got 67% statement coverage. Let's go into this and take a, a closer look. So we've got quite a few inline functions that we've never executed. And if we scroll down, we can see that on process event, we've got 93% statement coverage. Well, let's go and take a, a closer look at that. And we can see in this particular case, here we have some lines of code that we've not executed. Right, so that was the dynamic analysis. So now what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to perform the same dynamic analysis, but this time, rather than me typing things in, what I'd like to be able to do is to switch to use the test conductor. So inside here, I've got the test conductor. I've set this up and I should have a test context here. And what I'm going to be able to do is I should be able to see I've got a number of test cases. So let's go and execute these. And rather than just executing them in the normal way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute them with LD array. And this is going to instrument what's going to analyze, first of all, the code under test. It's then going to instrument that. And then it's going to execute all these five test cases. So this is going to take a little bit of time as it analyzes the code. And then it's going to execute each test Right, we can see the tests are now starting to execute, and the good thing is each test is passing, which means that our instrument code has not affected the way that the code behaves. So what we're going to do is to fast forward until we come to the last test case, and then we'll be able to view the results. So that's now just executed the last test case, and we're now going to be able to uh, view the, the coverage. So once again, just wait a, a few seconds here. OK, so here we have the, the coverage and we can see from executing the, the test cases with Test Conductor, we've got 94% statement coverage. And if we scroll down, we can see very clearly exactly what coverage we've obtained. And we go into the radio cl class here, we've got 93% statement coverage. And scrolling down, we can see that there are a few functions here where we haven't obtained 100%. We go into the root state process event and take a closer look. And if we scroll down, we can see what we haven't got coverage for is this default statement here. And that was added mainly just to make the code compliant to Misery C++. OK, so hopefully that's given you a quick overview of the integration with IBM Engineering Systems Design Rhapsody. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.